Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, uh, I'm Jeremy, uh, this is Christian. Uh, this is the uh, building a web app uh, for data exploration with smart mapping. And um, maybe just before Christian gets going in there, just to show you, uh, um, this is really the, this is, what Christian's gonna show you is an example of an application um, that does something similar to the map viewer for data exploration. I just wanna show this particular example to sort of kind of get you in the mode of what you're gonna be able to, uh, what you're gonna see from Christian. And um, what this is, is the sum of uh, people who consider themselves conservative. So I've got this data, this is to the city. Um, uh, the, the, and uh, from the large metropolitan areas, people who uh, consider themselves very conservative or somewhat conservative, and then divided by uh, those who register as Republicans. So that's the arcade expression. And uh, this, is sort of the, this is sort of the default map that um, smart mapping uh, generated. And something I like to do, and uh, this will come out in uh, Christian's examples as well, is to look at the data. We've got the average at 1.3. Let's go ahead and, for size, uh, set the values uh, to 1.3, maybe even a little bit higher. And uh, really that makes the smallest value be uh, this, uh, sorry, anything less than 1.44 would be a small, um, the smallest size circle. And anything more than that uh, would be a, definitely above that. So it really helps you highlight certain areas. Like for this data set, it's quite interesting in, the, um, in Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, along Alabama and Georgia, they're all, they all um, have a conservative outlook but they're uh, five times more likely to have a conservative outlook than actually register as Republican. And it's kind of interesting that the rest of the state. So this is the kind of uh, data exploration that you can do in the map viewer, but you can do the same thing uh, in uh, a custom application, and that's what Christian's gonna walk through. All right, um, recently I geo-enriched a layer on ArcGIS Online of Mexican municipalities with a bunch of data education data, population, household data, and uh, came up with some interesting visualizations. But um, if you wanted to do something, say, like explore demographics in any way, it might be uh, for uh, real estate. I know that there's real estate uh, firms out there who they want to know something about the demographics, and so they want to explore different variables. This is a situation where you might want to do a custom app uh, in JavaScript um, rather than ArcGIS Online. So I'll go ahead, that's the code. Well, I'll go ahead and open up this sample. So what I've got here is I've just put a little side panel off to the left and I have just a few attributes. So something with ArcGIS Online is that when you put in a URL or you, you add a layer and you want to change the style, it'll list a ton of fields, all the, all the fields in the layer. So let's say you have a layer that you geo-enrich that has 60 or 70 attributes. So you're gonna get a giant drop-down menu that uh, you know, forces you to choose from one of those values. Um, when you're creating a custom map, um, you might already know which fields you wanna deal with. In this case, I, I'm just looking at education and maybe the ratio of women to men. And um, I wanna know, you know the percentage of the population that went to preschool, primary school, secondary, high school, college. And that's all I care about. Even though I have household size, I have um, other um, variables in there as well. So I'm gonna restrict the user to just those. Um, you can also set up some kind of easy way to filter your data. So you can set definition expressions in the map viewer, but it, do it does take you several clicks to get in there and then you have to set up a SQL expression and um, users may find that unfriendly, particularly if they don't have a GIS background. Um, but you can, kind of program that yourself and, and configure it using like a slider or maybe another drop down menu so you can um, allow users to uh, filter their data that way. And you can optionally allow them to filter by extent. So let's go ahead and explore this a little bit. Right now this initial variable is the percentage of the population that did not uh, attend any school at all. So we have a max value of 54 as shown in this color slider and uh, min of zero. And so we, in the API, we provide um, a number of sliders. There's color slider, size slider, opacity slider. In 3D, you also have a color and size slider. Um, and you can hook in the, uh, you can listen to the slider events 
and update the renderer as you uh, change the slider like this. So you can see where these uh, areas tend to be, have a you know, higher percentage than others. So the way I've written this app is to demonstrate how you can generate a different visualization for each variable. So if I switch the uh, field, it's gonna generate a, visual, a new visualization on the fly, and you'll see the statistics update. So I guess as I, um, my, uh, as I change, as I go higher up in this education ladder all the way up to college, I expect the maximum percentage of the population to decrease. So there's preschool, go to primary school, so the renderer updates, then the slider's gonna update, so you see it dropping, and, and then you see the histogram update as well. And these handles are automatically placed at one standard deviation above and below the mean. You can get the mean by hovering over this, uh, this symbol for it. So, so yeah, so there you're, you're exploring the data that way, but you can also um, regenerate the render based on a subset of features. So that's showing everything, but what if I wanna take out the rural areas and show everything, say, above 60,000 people? So you see I filter those out, but then I regenerate the render and I get a new set of statistics. And so I see um, the slider update and I could get values like that. I can optionally, you know, as I said, add a drop down menu perhaps and uh, maybe I'll uh, filter it by city or by any other means. But something the map viewer in ArcGIS Online does not allow you to do is to filter by extent or by uh, geometry. So let's look at college. So here's the percentage of the population that uh, attended some college. Um, and I see uh, you know, patterns in the cities, but I wanna, I wanna go deeper into Mexico City. There's a, looks like there's a lot of deep purple down here. So I wanna see what it looks like if I filter by this extent. The render regenerates and you can see, as I zoom out, those features are filtered out and the smart mapping has chosen the correct, the, the uh, by, has queried for statistics based on only those features and chosen the colors that best fit this base map. And to also demonstrate that, so let's go ahead and clear that. As I zoom out, to demonstrate um, how the colors change with the base map, I've added this uh, base map gallery widget, so on each time I change the base map, it's gonna change the color scheme. And that's just smart mapping doing the work for me. So if I change it to dark gray, it, I'm gonna get this other visualization where the lighter colors show the higher values, and light gray is the opposite, and maybe the National Geographic might give me a little bit of different colors, or, and so you can see that um, I'm not, I'm not um, configuring renderers um, in my code, I'm just allowing smart mapping to generate this for me. So let's take a look at some of the code on how we got here. Um, you know, it actually might be uh, better to look at what it looks like in the IDE. So here's a JavaScript for my app. This is available on GitHub, by the way. I'll show you where you can find it uh, when we close up. And I'm bringing in um, a couple of smart mapping uh, modules. One of them is histogram, this allows me to generate the histogram for the slider, and the other is color, that allows me to generate color visual variable or a continuous color renderer. So I have this options array, uh, or this options object, sorry, and this is where I'm setting uh, or, or mapping uh, the, the values that are, or the expressions that generate values for each of these scenarios. Um, you'll notice that I'm not uh, using field values in most of these scenarios. If I go to woman to men ratio, I have a field and normalization field I'm using. Um, this is where um, custom apps become helpful to users, because in, say, in ArcGIS Online, you uh, are forced to choose a field, and then you have to choose a normalization field. You may not know which field to normalize by. Um, you can configure that all for your user and be smarter about that, so to speak, with uh, custom apps. But this, I just want to provide a disclaimer. We don't technically support uh, arcade expressions generating uh, uh, renderers and smart mapping in 4X, although I'm, I'm doing that. It's kind of, uh, you know, undocumented. Sorry, Jerry. But, uh, <laughs> but this, is, uh, this, is, this will be available later this year, and I'm uh, showing you just kind of how that works. So 
um, just to give you a sense of what those archaic expressions look like, we're not going to get too deep into this because we have another session coming up explaining them. Uh, uh, they, there's various levels of educational attainment in Mexico, and it doesn't tell me exclusively how many people went to preschool or how many people went to uh, elementary school or higher. So I have to write an expression for that. So I'm adding all those fields together and dividing based on the population or the total. And so I'm, I'm getting those values back um, here. Okay. So I set up my layer. And then I have a update smart mapping function. I call this function every time the base map changes. I call it every time the user chooses a new field. And I call it um, any time they change the definition expression with the slider. And it takes any number of parameters. And you'll see how simple this API really is to use. This is the uh, piece you want to remember right here. All you, all you need um, by, uh, all that's required, I should say, is a base map. And that can be a string referring to an Esri base map, or it can be the base map of your map. And you can see that that's what I'm getting or defaulting to up here. You need the layer and then a value. That value can come from a field name or a combination of field and normalization field or an arcade expression. And then you can optionally set legend options, which make, gives you a nice looking legend with legend text. Uh, but that's not required. So all you do is you call this create continuous render function um, on the color module. We also have a size module um, that allows you to do it for size. But in this case, we're just showing color. And what I'm doing here is once this uh, promise resolves, I'm going to grab the render from that object and set it back on the layer. So that's why you see the layer update. And after that, I'm going to call the histogram function. And that's available in that histogram module. And I'm, you'll notice that these parameters are very much the same. I just get the same required parameters. I can set the number of bins. In this case, I set 50, but you could even change it to 10 to give you something you know, more coarse or you're going to make it more fine. And then I'm going to construct my color slider if it doesn't already exist. And if it does exist, then I'm going to update the values. I'm going to update the min and max. I'm going to update the statistics and the histogram. And I'm going to pass in the new uh, handle. The handles are generated from those statistics and placed there. And I'll set up the uh, event handler so that every time the slider is changed, um, I'm going to get the visual variable of the slider and set it back on the render. And that's how you see the, the color change every time I slide it. And so, like I said, you can uh, configure it so that you um, do custom behavior for your users. They don't need to go in and set SQL expressions. You can write functions to do this for them. And the same thing with normalization. And that's, that's really what the power of, of doing a custom app is. It, it, it can simplify the UI. I mean, we use uh, products like ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Online. And you have a world of different options available to you, but you may not need all of them. And so this is the case where you can show, uh, uh, you can restrict the user from, from using all of those options. And so these are the uh, portions of this code I just showed off. Um, and do you want to go through documentation or show off anything else? Um, do you think it'd be useful to do the documentation? I think so. I'll, or I'll, I'll open it up. Okay. So I just want to show you uh, where you can learn how to do these things. So um, in the 4x API, we don't have full support for smart mapping. We're still missing some, some components. But you'll see uh, these uh, r the smart mapping Oops. right here. There's uh, functions for generating color. That's what I'm using in my, uh, in my app for Mexico. Um, there's location only. This will just generate a single symbol, but it will choose a color for you based on the, on the base map. There's size, and then there's univariate color and size, which this is used for 3D applications. So I'm going to, I can show you a 3D app as well, because we now support uh, uh, smart mapping in 3D as well. Um, let me go ahead and uh, go to uh, these demos and 
smart mapping. So this, can, this app contains a lot of data. It's uh, population for the world, and it basically came, I, I believe these are points generated from a uh, raster grid. And, uh, and so these are totals. I'm not, I'm not normalizing here. But uh, it'll generate the, the sizes, the statistics based on, um, on, the, on the smart mapping module. And then I can move the slider and see those cylinders uh, grow and shrink as I move it up and down. And notice that the color also changes as they grow and shrink. So that's the univariate color and size coming in. And if you look at the code for that, um, it's, it's, the API is pretty much the same. There's just a couple of different options um, that you need to set. Um, so the parameters, here we go. These are the parameters you're setting in. When you're dealing with uh, 3D scenes, you're gonna pass in the view because we, we base the size on the distance um, to the features. And then you're gonna set the symbol type. You could do a flat symbol or you could do a 3D volumetric symbol. And that's really all that is that's different about it. Um, and so you can create a lot of cool apps that allow uh, users to uh, explore their data. And then in 4, um, 4 has support for uh, reading and writing web scenes today. And then in the future, we'll have it for web maps. Um, you could build an application that lets someone explore it, and then they could save it back to their portal or online. So it's a it's a pretty uh, it's going to be pretty sweet uh, API for that, and this is a great example of uh, uh, interactive. Uh, actually, the performance of uh, fast symbol updates on 3D uh, to build these highly interactive uh, applications. Yep. And how much time do we got? Uh, do you have any questions about uh, setting up a custom app with smart mapping? Does it work with the web app builder? Um, I don't believe they have any widgets uh, in the web app builder that do this, but uh, you could give them that feedback. Um, you could definitely write Oh, one. yeah. Yeah. In both uh, 3x for the 2D web app builder or 4x for the 3D web app builder. As I said before, I, I have this source on GitHub. If you go to conferences in my repo, which is just my last name, Ekenes, E-K-E-N-E-S. Then go to DS2017, Smart Mapping, and you'll have this Mexico Demographics app available to you. You can view the live app here and view the source in the demos folder. And you can also see last year's demo, which is very similar. And that's a 3X demo. And this is a 3X demo. So if you're building a 3X app, this uses the 3X Smart Mapping API. So you can uh, certainly... Uh, uh, use that one. So this shows, you know, filtering by municipality and, regener and regenerating the renderer based on that instead of, say, the population. But uh, note that, you know, this is, this is pretty much the use case you want to use it for. Um, you know, you don't want to do this for all your apps because you take a performance hit when you're querying for statistics against the server. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, the smart mapping operations are very heavyweight, so it's... Uh... You don't want to build an app that calls these methods that Christian's showing every time the app loads. It would be wasteful. Um, but if you're going to build a data exploration app, then it makes sense. Any other questions? We can uh, hang out out there, too, if you need to. Yeah. We have another group uh, session, I think, coming in in a few minutes. So um, if you have questions, we'll just be outside and... Um, we can go over your use cases if you have any uh, cases that you want to use smart mapping in, and um, yeah. So. Thank you.